Hey, I'm Ryan at Robot Dog Studio and people have been really loving the mixes and the videos lately and asking how I got this or that sound and I wanted to go through a little bit of the process, some of the mixing and like how we mic'd up things and stuff. So one of the videos uh, people have been loving lately is a band called Matthew Mercury and they're a local Vermont Burlington band and they're a bunch of heavy hitters who've been playing in rock bands on the scene forever. And you know, people are saying like, how'd you get that snare sound? Or how'd you make this, this all come together? I don't really see any mics or anything. <laughs> and it basically comes down to they're a great band and they had a few great songs and they just played them really well. And it just made my job really easy. They have a guitarist and a keyboard player and they really structure everything really well. So it's all, all really balanced and it's really easy for me to do my job. So yeah, let's first, let's talk about the drum sound because uh, people are really digging that. And he's a great drummer and it just really does sound awesome. It has a lot of character on the recording. So one thing, if you're not getting a drum sound that you're happy with, one thing to think about is you might be doing too much. Uh, we, don't, we use three mics on the drums and you might be doing too much and you also might be using uh, an antiquated technique. Three mics on the drums but has nothing to do with Glenn Johns. You go on forums, so it's all Glenn Johns, Glenn Johns. That was amazing in the 70s, and it made a lot of sense for how records sounded in the 70s, and how mics were in the 70s, and the fact that people were recording the tape. But now we record on digital with these condenser mics that pick up so much highs. We then listen to the music on a cell phone, which further exacerbates those highs. And when we're doing these live sessions in the room, we've also got vocal mics and sometimes even a mic on the drummer for vocals. So we're getting a ton of cymbal wash in like every mic. So the thing is we don't need to do a lot of cymbal miking. We mainly need a mic like right up on the snare and a mic on the kick. And when we can for these sessions, we stick the mic right in the kick drum which makes a good sound, um, but it also isolates it from the other instruments in the room. This is kind of our innovation for you know having to do like 60 or 70 or 80 of these videos so far. We wanted to just make it really simple. Uh, so what we're doing is we're using this overhead mic, but it's really what it's doing is, is getting some attack on the floor tom and also tangentially picking up a little bit of definition on the cymbals. And it's over here by the ride cymbal. We're gonna get a ton of hi-hat from the snare mic bleed. This kind of does get a little detail on the ride cymbal. So yeah, that's our key thing. That's our robot dog live in the studio type drum recording setup. SM57 on the snare, um, AKG D112 on the kick, and then this uh, Audio-Technica AT2020, which we love, we use all the time. These can be found for $50 used and they just sound amazing. They sound really, really good. That's a big thing is like, we don't, we don't need to mic the cymbals in here because what we have is we have, if you follow me over to the vocal mic, we'll try to put the lead vocalist over here, which in our small room is as far away from the drums as we can get him. Um, but we got this lead vocalist right here and if the drummer is really cranking on those cymbals or even just hitting a cymbal in the same room, <laughs> the bottom line is you're going to get a lot of cymbals in your vocal mic. Don't need room mics because this mic is across the room from the drums and we're going to put reverb and delay on it so it becomes a room mic. Alright, so that's, that's basically the drum sound is sort of the bleed that's in the vocal mic and a few close mics on the drums themselves. The other thing someone asks is, yeah, I don't really see any mics on the on the amps. Well, there are, I think in that one shot, it was just out of camera, but with the guitars, we use a very simple setup there, and it's just an SM57, usually like right on the cone of a speaker um, because we want it nice and bright in comparison to the drums and cymbals that are in the room. Sometimes we'll angle the cab a bit, like away from the drums, or angle the, the, the microphone a bit away from the drums to cut down and bleed. 
we almost always use this Ampeg, trusty Ampeg uh, V4B for bass in the room. And we just let the bass player kind of crank up and play at a level that they're comfortable. And we just use the direct out of this. And I believe it's after the preamp, so it gets a little bit of grit. It's the fastest, easiest thing to do. Just plug a chord into this and you definitely get a, a live bass sound because there's a ton of bleed in the room and then you get a lot of definition coming right off of the the preamp of the amplifier itself. Uh, for Matthew Mercury they had a keyboard player and we of course ran that direct too and I think our engineer Sam was super cool and hooked up a stereo DI for him but um, in general, I would say just, just go mono on all these things. And that's another point is like, don't overdo it with stereo tracks on individual instruments when it's an ensemble. When, when you're putting them into a mix, you're going to be cool to have that one mono mic of it. It's just going to give you more things to worry about if you have stereo sources and you're, you're just trying to fit them into a mix. Now, on the other hand, if you're recording like a solo instrument or like one instrument and one vo and voice, then it makes a lot of sense to record like a stereo piano or even a stereo guitar if it's just acoustic guitar and vocal because you want to fill out a lot more space. But you're just gonna it's just kind of a waste of information if you're doing stereo stereo everything and you're also trying to fit those instruments into a mix. All right, so yeah, that's basically how we recorded it in the room. So let's uh, pull it up on the computer and just get a basic idea of how I mixed it. All right, so mixing Matthew Mercury from their live in the studio performance. Why does it sound good? Well, basically, it's a great band with a great song, and I really just had to do my best not to screw it up, and hopefully I succeeded there. So you can see there's about 10 uh, neat and tidy tracks here. Not a lot of editing going on or anything like that. So basically the band uh, has a really simple, balanced, catchy song, really um, organized and balanced arrangement. I needed to follow suit with my mix and make it that same simple equation of instruments. We're gonna have some loud ass drums down the center, and then we're gonna have some kind of equally balanced uh, keys and electric guitar on the sides. And then we're gonna like kind of tuck the, the vocals there in the middle at just the right level, hopefully. Now that we have a uh, philosophy behind our mix, we can dive in and kind of see how I achieve that. So um, one of the interesting things with these live in the studio things is one thing you're always going to have is a ton of bleed, usually mostly drums, in the lead vocal mic. So let's check that out. Ah, yeah. <laughs> there are those drums in the background of the lead vocal. And there's some guitar. But anyway, when the vocal finally comes in, Left you a message on the sidewalk. Okay. I'm standing now here. So there it is. So basically, you don't want to start by mixing your drums perfectly, getting the perfect level of cymbals, of hi hats, of crash cymbals, and everything, and then trying to add the lead vocal on top of that because suddenly you'll have way too much cymbals. What you really need to do on these is start from the lead vocal. You need to get a basic mix going for your lead vocal. Compress it as much as you want to compress it so you can hear those, see how much the, the, the bleed is going to pop out in that lead vocal. But anyway, just to give you a feel for the recording, um, here are the drums. And the instruments come in. And you can hear there's there's really not a ton of bleed of the other instruments in the drum mics. All right, so let's check out the bass. It's direct, of course. Got that great 
new wavy phaser effect going on it. And we got the keys, which are stereo, and they're on two tracks, and they've just been bussed into one bus so they can be on one fader and we can process them as one track. They sound like this. And there's the electric guitar. And you can hear there's a bit of drum bleed in the electric guitar too. So as far as the tones on these things that I've also been getting nice uh, compliments on, it's uh, it's all the band. It's uh, it's their cool uh, kick drum that they brought and their snare and the, and the cool uh, mute they had on top of the snare and uh, the effects pedals the bass player is using and the patches the keyboard player made and the cool guitar amp and the way the guitar is played. My job was just to uh, bring that out in a balanced way so you'd hear what was going on. So yeah, the main thing on a mix like this is just getting those kind of philosophies down and the balance of things. And if you get that, it's going to work. Um, but I will go through and show you some of the fun things I did to get where the mix is at. Coming up with a drum sound like this, and we'll hear it. But yeah, it's just just those three mics, and yeah, there's like looks like a lot of plugins and stuff here. But it's just very subtle layers on each one of those things, so none of them are doing anything crazy. But there is uh, one thing that kind of does a lot of heavy lifting and makes a big difference on the drum bus, and something I like to do, which is throwing an effect rack on from sound toys and throwing two decapitators in it on two different styles of distortion and just kind of bleeding in a little bit of drive on those with the mix at 100 percent i'm not a big fan of of scaling the mix back on these so basically without it it's fairly subtle but this is without it with it it's definitely a little wussier but anyway I'll crank this up to show you what it does basically it makes indie drums sound awesome I mean that sounds sick I think that's fun, but it wasn't really what we were going for on this mix. Um, but yeah, so what I like to do is turn it up like that and then just kind of turn it down until you barely, barely notice it in there, but it's still making everything nice and fast. And then I have this other style going, so which is just like kind of spreading, doing not doing so much heavy lifting with one plug-in all the time. So we have a layer of this distortion here, and we have a layer of this distortion here. And they both come together to create like a really, a really natural, really transparent sounding, just element of punch to those drums. All right. So that's a big deal on those drums. All right, so let's check out the bass guitar next. All right, nothing crazy going on there, but I guess the one like little cool tip that I always love to do on bass, which a lot of other people do too, because it really works, is uh, pull up a Saturn plugin from fad filter it's a distortion saturation plugin and it's got this great little graphic eq with this 
one band on it that's just like so good for bass guitar it's like you crank it up and it makes your bass guitar audible in a mix on an iphone and let's hear it in the mix to hear what that does like obviously we're overdoing it but you turn that up and like suddenly you can hear that bass And yeah, you just bring it back down until it's a more reasonable level. Um, all right, yeah, and keys. What did we do on keys? Nothing really special there, you know? Just they're plugged in direct. That's the sound he wants, and we're, we're cool with it. Um, one thing I do on a lot of tracks is use this uh, little Satsun plugin. It's a really cheap plugin from a company called Sonomous, and it's just like puts a little drive on on each track and kind of emulates the sound you'd get if you were mixing through an analog console. And when we're processing direct keyboard tracks, I like to crank it up pretty strong because they tend to not really sit with the other uh, instruments that you record with a mic very well unless there's a little bit of grit on them. So again, yeah, didn't do too much to those. Just, you know, they sounded great as is. It wasn't my job to to build a tone there. Same thing, of course, with the guitar. You know, these, these guys have a very specific sound in mind, and it's awesome. So really what's making this all work is just how they put their parts together. It really has nothing to do with me. The main thing is that I need to just show those in just a really clear representation. Keys on one side, guitar on the other side. Just comes together beautifully. All right, so the lead vocal. to moonlight the mood is heavy think I'm gonna choke alright so we got a little bit of that Saturn on there again on this heavy saturation preset mix dial back a little bit gets us that strokesy distortion going and then we also uh, make it even more of a complex thing by bringing in this uh, Echo Boy delay that also uh, with this Dirt Echo preset that has some great grit on it too oh. You kiss the center and you go slow. You stand up slowly, say, I gotta go. Oh, now, baby, ain't And all that combines to really do some fun things with, uh, with the drums, really. And we all right. Yep, so we get to the backup vocals now. That's one of the only things I did kind of edit here, which is just to kind of manually gate them, cut the regions up so they're not playing when the vocalists aren't singing. And you can hear a lot of drums come in on those tracks when they come in and out, but you don't really notice it in the mix. All right, so giving away all my secrets here, one of the things I love to do on backup vocals is just uh, use a bit of this MicroShift plugin, which uh, it's like a chorus stereoizer type plugin. And what I use it for is just to kind of diffuse backup vocals a bit and set them into a mix a bit. So here's what that does. So nice and dreamy and kind of in the back. Turn it off. 
don't break. Much more, much more direct and in your face. With it on, you can still hear them great, but they're just kind of pushed back in space a little bit where they, where they need to be. So yeah, again, just kind of keeping up our thing of balancing left and right. We had two backup vocals, so we'll put them just a little bit off to the sides. balancing each other. So anyway, I think that really sums up the philosophy of doing one of these live in the studio mixes. Just like keeping everything really simple and balanced with like a clear game plan and just being true to the song and just letting all those fun uh, noisy elements that come out when you're recording in a room like that and all the bleed and all the all the happy accidents that happen just just bringing all that to life and just rolling with it so i hope you got something out of this thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments just leave them below and i'll see you next time thanks bye